Welcome everyone. It's nice to look out there and almost see everybody here this morning. Um, had a beautiful sunrise. As we seek God's way, we move from confidence of knowing how things are to the unsettling openness of realizing God's ways are beyond what we can imagine. I'm going to go right into announcements. Was it in March we had the uh, food drive for the pantry, for the formal food pantry? Now we're going to uh, ask to bring food or personal care items for the Bethel AME blessing box collecting in the foyer the first three Sundays of May. And then Saturday, April 23rd, is the Hillcrest Academy turkey steak fundraiser meal, free will offering for student scholarships. And then uh, you may want to follow Will Miller around on Sunday, April 24th, for the Pleasant View groundbreaking ceremony, and then go to the Hillquest Choir will be performing here. See Laura Lee if you can help with treats for a fellowship time after the program. Now, uh, I sure want to pass the microphone around for sharing. Yeah, this is Laura Lee. So see me after church if you can bring some cookies or bars for next Sunday evening um, to treat our guests. So just see me after church so I can put your name down. Thank you. Hi, this is Emily Yoder. And in the boxes, the mailboxes, you may have seen an Iowa Mennonite Relief Sale flyer. So just letting you know, there is going to be a Mennonite Relief Sale on June 11th. It'll be one day, that Saturday, and they've started asking for auction items. So either for the live auction or the online auction, trying to get those to Steve Grunwald by May 1st. His contact information is on the flyer. Um, all kinds of uh, auction items are encouraged. If you have any questions on what he's looking for, and spe uh, specifically, you can also contact him, uh, as well as more information about quilt donations as on the flyer. Um, but I did especially want to call your attention to help is needed. Um, specifically, the book sale booth does not have a volunteer coordinator, so um, it will not happen if a coordinator is not identified. And very seriously, apple fritters and strawberry pie booths do not have volunteer coordinators. So if anyone is interested in, in taking the burden for that, um, let uh, Don Patterson know, or if you want to try and work together with somebody, um, feel free to talk to myself or Matt Miller as your MCC reps. And we can um, maybe try and put something together. Thank you. Hey, this is Matt Miller. I um, just want to welcome my uncle, Marcus Miller, over here to East Union and Beth. Just kidding, he's not my uncle. Um, no, I, I'm the cemetery mowing czar, we'll say, and I've been waiting to see like when we do our first mowing. Um, I think we're going to try to get that done this week. And if you are interested in doing some mowing for, I believe the pay is like $165 to mow the whole cemetery and trim it, uh, let me know and I will get you on an email list and we'll, I'll put out a sign up probably early next week once we have that first mowing done. I've been waiting until we figure out when that's going to be, but I do think it's going to be this week. So let me know if you're interested in doing that. Thanks. This is Pam Stoltzfus, and um, East Union is asked to provide some pies for the turkey steak supper. And I have, I just still need two pies yet. So could you just see me after church if you can do that? Thanks. As a song of welcome and praise, let's turn to number 350 in the Voices Together hymnal. The strife is over. It'll also be projected onto the wall. We'll sing the opening alleluias and then all four verses and then close with the alleluias. Number 350, and let's stand, if able.
Read along with me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Together we seek the way of God. On this day that God has made, may our hearts be open to the good news. Christ is not here, for he is risen. Jesus Christ is risen indeed. Please turn your head Creating God, redeeming God, sustaining God. You are always on the cusp of creating new heavens, new earth the twists and turns of life, the resurrection from death, the power of love to find a path in the wilderness. All astound and confound us. We stand wet-eyed with open mouths before the tomb. The stone has been rolled away, and we peer into darkness as your voice calls from behind. You know our names. You are a new being. You are compassionate, and you are released urging us not to hold on to you, but to join in your movement. May we move so that our lives become new. The circle of our care expands and connects. Our openness clearly declares we have seen the Lord. On this day of resurrection, we praise you for your renewing promise and power. Amen. This time in our worship service where we uh, invite you to give online or at the basket place at the back, back of the church and if there's some seed in there already um, we're banned for mobile and now at this time our tradition is to uh, fill up this cross up here so from your pew do that Oh, we got we got a whole bunch of singing to do this morning. Oh, I forgot to flip that over. Let's stand. Our opening song for this Easter morning will be number three forty one. Christ is arisen. Alleluia.
next song of praise and gathering is number 340. Number 340, lift your glad voices. Lone E. Lift your glad voices in triumph and high, for Jesus has risen and we shall not die. Fain were the heavens that gathered around him, and sure the dominion of death and the grave. He burns from the Sanctuary of sound. Beautiful. Number 361 is our next song of gathering and praise. 361. Next song is number 333 in Voices Together. 
Lo, in the grave he lay. Number 333. I always think it's a shame that we only sing this one Sunday a year. So let's make it count. Lo, C, and then G. seated for our final song of gathering and praise number 346.
Okay, now it's time for our annual um, getting together and creating this living cross. So if you'll come up on the, on the outside aisles and return to your seats to the center aisle.
nicest living cross we've ever done. So uh, now it's time for the children to come forward for children's time. <laughs> love to see all the bright spring colors it's making me hope it gets warm out okay let's see what our friends Lenny and Penny have to say today hi Penny how are you doing today I'm feeling kind of down today oh why what's the matter well to be honest I really miss my blankie I woke up feeling pretty down, and then when I remembered I didn't have my blankie, I felt really sad. I'm sorry, Penny. I can get it for you and give it back. But before I do that, can I tell you our Bible story? Sure, I would really like that. Our story today is about a woman named Mary who was feeling really sad, too. She was feeling sad because Jesus was her good friend. And Jesus had been killed. Mary cried a lot. And three days after Jesus died, she went to the tomb where his body had been taken. Kind of like people these days to go visit the cemetery where their loved ones are buried. Well, she got to the tomb and it was empty. The body was gone. That would be like us going to the cemetery there would be a big hole in the ground where the person was buried. Whoa, that would be awful! Yes, and we would think someone stole the body, and that's what Mary thought too. That would be a terrible thing for someone to steal the body? Yep. So Mary left the tomb to go tell Jesus' friends what happened. And as she was walking back, guess what? What? Jesus showed up. What? what? Yes. Jesus showed up and Mary saw him. Can you imagine how surprised and happy she felt? But, but, how is that even possible? Jesus is the son of God. And Jesus is stronger than death. He rose from the dead. This is the best Bible story ever. Yes, it is. I am glad I got to tell it to you. Me too, me too. There's one more thing. This is for you. For me? It's so beautiful and so soft. It's from my fiber when I got sheared, so I'm literally giving you a part of my body. Oh, Lenny, I don't even know what to say. You don't have to say anything. I've been thinking about the Bible stories you have taught me, and I am learning so much about how God loves us. And I want to be more loving, more kind, more generous, and more joyful. And more bouncy? Penny, I will never be as bouncy as you are, but that's okay. We each can show God's love in our own ways. Here's a verse for us to remember. What God is doing is marvelous in our eyes. What God is doing is marvelous in our eyes. What God is doing is marvelous in our eyes. Have you guys ever been stubborn before, kind of like Lenny has been? Have you ever wanted your way and not gotten it? Yeah? No. Yeah. What makes you guys feel happy and bouncy like Penny? Do you guys have any examples of that? For me, it's like warm weather. When the sun comes out, I feel really happy. And you, you guys have any examples of when you're happy? Yeah? Um, 
time when, when my dad sometimes he takes me fishing and I get really excited when he catch me. That's so fun. Do any other people have any examples? Oh yeah. Has anybody ever given you guys a surprise gift like Lenny gave Penny? Yeah, you guys have any examples of those? Okay, let's pray together, okay? So remember, repeat after me, right? Okay, Lord, thank you for this day. And thank you for dying on the cross for us. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back to your parents. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Then she had said this. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Good morning. I'm so thankful to be worshiping at East Union this morning. Christ is risen. I think. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday reminds us of uh, sort of the messy beautifulness. When I think about the living cross, you know, some of the flowers fall to the, to the ground. It's a little bit chaotic, it's a little bit messy, but what a beautiful transformation. This wire, chicken wire and wood becomes something artistic, something of beauty. You know, we, in our minds, we like to be certain about things, but allowing this to creatively take shape with the helpful hands of uh, Lou and Judy, obviously, but, but, you know, it takes shape, it becomes something new, and we have to allow ourselves to be open to that creativity, open to what can become. I want to share a story with you. There once was a, a man living... Uh, with uh, severe eye pain. 
and this pain was overwhelming. So he consulted a, a number of physicians, but none of them could treat this ache. And he went through all sorts of treatments and plans and tried everything he could, but the pain persisted. And, and somehow, somehow it even it got worse. He looked for every possible solution, and, and eventually he decided to go to a monk renowned for treating various illness, illnesses. And the, and the monk carefully observed the man's eyes, and he offered him this sort of peculiar solution to solve his problem. The monk told the man to concentrate only on the green colors in the world. Like when he's going around, whatever he looks at, like try to focus on green, the color green for several weeks and, and sort of try to avoid other colors. Well, the man was desperate to get rid of his pain. So he's like, well, I'll try anything. And he uh, decided, well then, okay, if, if green is what I'm supposed to focus on, then green is what I will look at. And so he hires a number of painters and they, they do an extensive uh, reworking in his home, purchase green paint by the barrel and everything that he could see, he had them painting green all over so that everything that he looked at was green. And when the, the monk came to visit and check up on the man's progress, uh, he saw the man's room. He saw the, the painters, what they have done. He could see that the whole corridor, the hallways were painted green, the ceilings were painted green, the, some of the furniture was painted green. Everything that he looked at was, was green. So he could see that the, the, uh, the man had taken him seriously, had put in uh, to, to action this advice to look at only green. But then the, the monk sort of laughed to himself, right? He said, if only you had purchased a pair of green spectacles, green sunglasses worth a couple of dollars, you could have saved a large share of your fortune because you can't paint the world green. Well, I wonder what, what you think the moral of the story is, right? Maybe the moral could be that we need to, to change our vision so the world will appear accordingly. Sometimes we imagine that we need to paint the world green in order to see green, but sometimes it's about our vision. I think we are in need of new vision this morning, fresh vision. Another example, maybe along this line, is like, uh, how many of you commute to work? A few of you? Right, when you, when you go to work every day and you take the same route each and every morning, driving the same car, taking the same paths, probably listening to the same music, well, you can kind of go through the zone. In fact, I don't know if you've had this experience before, but I've, I've traveled, you know, when I do a, a, this, a similar trip over and over again, you can kind of get lost in your thoughts and sometimes you arrive at your destination and you don't even realize how you got there. One time I remember uh, arriving at the wrong place because I got so in the zone, but that's another story. Well, if you're like most people, you'll remember the moment, the day when something happens differently, right? The sun's shining, the daffodils are blooming, uh, they're pushing up in the median. The, you know, We Are the Champions by Queen is playing in the background on the radio. And an ordinary trip all of a sudden sticks in your mind and becomes something extraordinary, something new. Your vision maybe has changed. I think we need new vision this morning, a fresh vision. We need to have a change of understanding. Maybe like the change in understanding that Mary Magdalene had, or the two disciples. You know, my, Mary finds this tomb empty. She confronts the disciples, Peter and John, and they check it out to see if it's true. Side note, I can't help myself, but what's going on with John? Why does he have such a big ego that he has to be the first one there? He has to be the one that's loved, right? But Mary chooses to linger. She stays at the tomb. She's bereft. She doesn't even have Jesus' body at the tomb to console her, as was shared in the children's time, right? We go to the grave 
to be consoled, to find hope when we are bereft, when we are at a loss. And it's at this time that Jesus has an encounter with a gardener, or was it? When Jesus speaks her name, she recognizes him, she sees him for who he is, and her eyes are open. She has a fresh vision, a new vision. Mary is able to see Jesus. You know, if you think about it, this story, we hear it each and every year. It, it like maybe our trips to work, can become routine. We can become numb to the fact that it's told over and over again, and we may need a fresh vision. Let's hear these words again. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. They have taken him away, and I don't know where they have laid him. Mary had her world turned upside down. In just a short few days, like the other disciples, her best friend, her mentor, her teacher, the one who forgave her and made her feel whole, was brutally killed on a cross. She's distraught. She's hurting. She's desperate to find relief. And so she goes to the grave to find some consolation. Again, who of us has not gone to a graveside? Who of us has not gone to a specific place or to people that we care about to find comfort in our time of need? Simply being near one another, being near the place where one longs for help to find from the, the presence after someone has departed. And what we have in this story from Mary is a deep and intimate look at real emotion, deep emotion. It's unvarnished. She is crying out to God. She's grieving. And through her, we ha have permission to grieve too. Mary comes out of her desire to be where the body of Jesus lies. She's sad that it's taken away, and not just by death, but by this disappearance. She grieves, she yearns, she weeps. And her words are poignant. They hit the mark. And we too can, I think, sometimes resonate with this, right? They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. They have taken away. What could you insert into that space this morning? What has been taken away from you, from us? The state of our world is seemingly at a crossroads. Globally, there are wars and conflicts all over the place. Places that you may not even realize, right? The first one that comes to mind, I'm not even gonna mention it. There were conflicts in South Sudan, and Yemen, and Libya, Afghanistan, and Syria. There's criminal violence in Mexico, political instability in Iraq, and Venezuela, Lebanon, Egypt, Ethiopia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, sectarian violence towards the Rohingya and in and, and the crisis in Myanmar, territorial disputes in the East and South China Seas, Turkey and armed Kurdish groups, Israel and Palestine. There's a crisis in our country, provisional data from CDC and the National Center for Health Statistics says that there were over an estimated 100,306 drug overdose deaths in the United States during a 12-month period ending in April of 2021. We are experiencing relational and interpersonal deaths, death to relationships. There are community deaths. We've lost so many people in the last 
couple of weeks. That pain of bad news. So like Mary, some of us today on this Easter Sunday when we celebrate are hurting. We've gone to the graveside to seek some consolation and we have found an empty tomb. Like Mary, some of us need a fresh vision, a new vision, renewed hope. And thankfully, our story doesn't end there. At verse 14, it says, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Not only was the tomb empty, but Jesus had been resurrected. Christ is risen. And we have resurrection hope this morning. And what does that resurrection hope mean? Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You know, we are in a culture today that likes answers, quick facts and certainty. We know what we know. It's truth. It's fact. You know, you, you, you can point to the answer. You can look it up and, and point to it right there. You can hold it. You can touch it. You can see it. You can feel it. So what in the world do we do with the resurrection story in which the facts are unclear? Where the gospel narratives tell various stories that aren't uniform? What does it mean to have a story about one woman going to the tomb or several women going to the tomb or why women at all? I mean, after all, during this time, women were considered to not be witnesses. It would have taken two men to be present in order for there to be a true witness. Was it a bodily resurrection? Later on in the story, we'll find that Jesus eats and drinks with his disciples. Jesus encounters the disciples on several occasions and appears to be physically present with them. And yet here in this story, we hear Jesus saying, cautioning Mary, don't touch me. I haven't gone to the Father yet. Or there's the story where Jesus simply appears to the disciples in a locked room. Or simply disappears after breaking bread and drinking with the disciples on the road to, the, uh, to Emmaus. The reality is, is that we, we don't know, we don't know. I don't know. I can only profess and proclaim to what I do know. The tomb that Mary found was empty, and she encountered the resurrected Christ. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus appeared to his disciples. And so our, our resurrection promise this morning is that the living Christ appeared and can appear again. We are able to experience resurrection hope today in your life. You're no longer defined by your worst mistakes. You're no longer defined by broken relationships. They can be restored. We who are mortal need no longer to fear death. I don't know if you've been noticing over the last couple of weeks, but 
there has been a tremendous amount of pasture burning, ditch burning. Everywhere you look, there's a place that's being burned, grasses that are being burned up. And we had the opportunity to go out to uh, Doyle and Janet's house on, on Friday afternoon evening, and they burned off their pasture. And it's an amazing sight, right? Like all this dead and, and old uh, prairie grass, and it goes so fast. It just lights up, and the flames are, are so high, right? It burns everything up. And yet we know that in days from now, if the sun comes out, if it warms up just a little bit, if there's a little bit of rain, what will happen? New green grass will grow. Creation all around us gives us a glimpse at resurrection hope. You know, if you watch The Lion King, we sometimes describe it as the circle of life, right? But really, we're speaking to resurrection promise that new life springs forth out of death. I hate to disappoint this morning, but we can't scientifically prove how or why Jesus was resurrected. We cannot define this resurrection with certitude or clarity. After all, the Gospels tell different stories about the resurrection itself. But we know the tomb is empty. Jesus appeared to Mary, later to other disciples, and Jesus can appear to you. And for that we have hope. A hope that the darkest, emptiest, places of death can also experience resurrection life. Community, siblings, this Easter Sunday is not about certainty. It's not about having the right answers or, or some formula. Easter does not provide us with cold, hard facts. It creates a living cross, a messy, beautiful, living cross provides hope fragile and delicate but hope the tomb is empty and christ is risen may it be so Thank you.
Could you stand as you're able? Receive this sending blessing from this time and place into whatever awaits. May you follow God's way of openness. May you have the courage to step beyond certainty into the unsettling miracle of the resurrection. As you go, give thanks that the resurrected one leads you toward God's way. Hallelujah. Go in peace.